For this week's headlines, Axie Infinity's Ronin network suffers $625 million exploit. Can hackers really launder this massive amount? Metamask expands into Apple ecosystem, allows iPhone users to buy crypto. Is Apple going all in on crypto? Institutional demand. Large transactions on Cardano up 50 times in 2022. Will this trend continue for ADA? Seven common mistakes that crypto investors and traders make. What are these and how to avoid them? It's all coming up. Australian celebrities say Facebook didn't do enough to stop crypto scams. The government agrees. How was the scam executed? All details up ahead. G'day everybody, welcome to another week of This Week in Crypto. I am your host, Craig Cobb of TraderCobb.com and I'm going to take you through the events that has happened this week and hasn't there been a lot of them. The market has looked fantastic by the way, we've seen some fantastic trends, some great trading conditions and as we go through a bit of a dip at the moment, I'm hopeful that the daily gives me a perfect cradle candle right there in that zone where it is currently sitting. Of course, if you want to know more about what we do, how we trade, and also if you'd like to get discounted trading fees on your trading accounts, then click the link or in the description below, you can find absolutely everything that you're going to need for that. So let's start off with the biggest news item of the week. Axie Infinity's Ronin network suffers $625 million exploit. It may be the largest exploit in DeFi history. Certainly was a big one. Now, this has been going around the markets quite a bit, and I have to say that this is not, in my view, not the reason for the dip, because this information, this news came out before Bitcoin started to pull back. Yes, a $600 million hack did not cause too much of a blip across the market. Of course, for other projects that are more closely associated with this hack, I'm sure they've had a hard time. The latest crypto hack may be the largest yet, this article says. The gaming focus Rona Network announced Tuesday a loss of $625 million in USDC and Ethereum. An, attack, sorry, an attacker used hacked private keys in order to forge fake withdrawals from the Ronin Bridge across two transactions, as seen on Etherscam. The blog post pegged the losses at 173,600 Ethereum and 25.5 million in USDC, currently worth in excess of 625 million. Absolutely huge hack. Now, a couple of things come to mind with this particular hack. First things first, as I said before, it didn't have it didn't have too much of an effect on the market. It didn't make the market go bananas, go crazy like it has done in the past. And on previous hacks, especially, you know, I remember going back in 2017, a hack would just cause the market to really sell off hard almost immediately. We may, we may see some more selling off coming into the market, but what I can say is this, the market is still robust, the trends are still there, and it happened days after, and we need a pullback, to be honest, for the trends to stay strong. So it's a bit of a different kettle of fish here. The second question, how are they going to get their money? <laughs> so this article from Coindesk that I'm about to go through now, it's the title says, so you've stolen 600 million. Now what? After one of the largest crypto exploits in DeFi history, the hacker of Axie's Ronin network has limited options. Let's go through a couple of these options. Despite the eye-watering sum, however, experts told Coindesk in a series of interviews that it's unlikely the attacker will ever get to enjoy their ill-gotten gains. And that's good. I'll tell you why. Because... It's one thing to take the money, it's another thing to be able to use it, and that's a good thing. Now, if I had $625 million cash, well, I'd have a very big truck or trucks, but um, I, wherever I am, the money is too. Now, what this individual or group of people or whoever or however, whatever it was, what they've got to do now is try and get their crypto into a place where they can actually use it. And uh, that's what this article is about. Immediately after the attack, however, observers noted that the hacker used centralized exchanges to fund the address that launched the attack and that they have been depositing thousands of Ethereum to exchanges including Horby, FTX and Crypto.com, a move that many security experts have characterized as a likely misstep. So it would seem very silly 
if you are to pull off one of the largest, or if not the largest hack uh, in the market right now, uh, and you were to use a centralized exchange, you got KYC. That really defeats the purpose. All the high tech stuff to get that hack done, and then you go across and use an exchange when your name's on it. Let's go a little bit deeper. A more common strategy from exploiters is to use a mixer like Tornado Cash. Setting stolen funds through a non-KYC exchange is and generally not rushing to cash out everything straight away. Maybe waiting years even, said Robinson, who was uh, one of these people that are looking into this side of it. Now, we go on further into this article, and it's quite a long article, and there are points in there that I do not want to read out. You can go and find this article yourself if you like, but it takes you through some of the comments from people on Twitter that have suggested ways for this person to be able to effectively clean their money, launder their ill-gotten gains. I'm not reading that for the obvious reason. I do not want to encourage anybody or give anybody the heads up to exactly how you can do that. For me, hacking, stealing, robbing, uh, all these things are really, really bad, I don't like them, so I'm not going to read about it. But a lot of people had a lot of things to say. So from our hack, we move into some very good news. And this article is on Mickey. MetaMask expands into Apple ecosystem, allows iPhone users to buy crypto. Now, that's a big step in the right direction. You'll remember that last week, if you were here for last week's news, I talked about consensus uh, and their obviously MetaMask wallet and having raised $450 million or something around those sorts of figures. Uh, for a lot more growth and expansion of the consensus business. Revert back to the article here. MetaMask Mobile version 4.3.1 received a slew of updates, the most notable of which was an addition of Apple Pay support. Users can now purchase cryptocurrency using their debit or credit cards, eliminating the need to send ETH to the app ahead of time. Using their Visa or MasterCards and the Wire API, Apple Pay customers can deposit a daily maximum of $400 into their wallet. Again, what we're seeing here, you know, some people might look at this and go, oh, geez, another way for people to go and spend their money on crypto. That's not a good thing. And that's fine. Everyone's got their opinions, their thoughts, their processes. The thing I see this is it's a further expansion into the mainstream. Now, crypto is definitely now more mainstream than it has ever been before. But this is not just understanding or knowing about what crypto is. This is actual user case. And it's coming into one of the largest companies in the world in Apple. That is a step in the right direction and a big, big step forward for the industry. Now, MetaMask has been coming across a lot of success lately. MetaMask rakes in 30 million active users. Here's this is from the article again. MetaMask topped 30 million monthly active users on March 15, making it one of the most popular cryptocurrency wallets on the market. Consensus, the Ethereum solutions company behind the wallet, has announced a $450 million fundraising round for which they, I believe they did close. So we've got MetaMask here working with Joe LeBan, LeBan with Consensus, powerhouses here pushing forward uh, with the growth of MetaMask uh, into an integration with the Apple app and being able to use Apple Pay and your credit cards. That is a humongous step in the right direction, combining those two big companies together, especially with Apple, and making it much more user-friendly for people to have more options to be able to buy their crypto. They've also been very responsible too, I might add. It's $400 a day maximum. So there are some hinges and there are some sort of stopgap levels in there that is very, very responsible. Well done. Okay, on to now Cardano. Uh, this is a Cointelegraph article. Institutional demand. Large transactions on Cardano up 50 times in 2022. Crypto intelligence firm Into the Block reports that the number of large transactions on the Cardano blockchain has increased by more than 50 times this year. Large transaction volume, brackets LTV, refers to aggregated volume from transactions denominated in Cardano's ADA token valued at more than $100,000. So, you know, a lot more larger capital positions being taken. Since January 1, the LTV has increased from 1.35 billion ADA per day to 69 billion ADA worth 81.4 billion, changing hands on Cardano on Monday. That's a 51-fold increase in about three months and marks one of the highest volume levels since mid-2018, according to Into the Block. In a Tuesday tweet, the firm said that such high volumes indicate increasing institutional demand. Now, I saw, uh, I think it's Charles Hoskins, is that his name? I, I think I've got that right. I saw a video that he put out throughout this week as well, stating, and this is huge, and I did speak of this on the podcast as well, the Trader Cobb Crypto Show is where you'll find that, 
Um, he was saying something along the lines of Cardano was going to have a Solana type event, which you know I think he was trying to push towards the fact that he believes that Cardano is going to have a move similar to what Solana did during 2021. And we all know that that was one of the larger moves in the market of the time. Now, the, the thing is with this is that, of course, he is the guy behind it, the creator, the inventor, whatever you want to call it. So take what he says lightly, but also listen to what he has to say. There was nothing really backing the reasons to why. It's kind of like a bit of a hint. The thing is, though, at this moment in time with you know crypto the way that it is and Cardano being a multi-billion dollar uh, token, you've got to be very careful with that sort of stuff because you can't just go out and hint things. I mean, you can say, look, we're looking for a very productive, very strong year. We're going to have this and this and this rolling up. But you, you can't just go out and go, ha, 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 ha. I reckon we're going to 100x this year or something crazy like that. It's a very dangerous thing to do. And I, I just don't know what's going to come of that. Further into the article, the year began with about 3.4 million addresses, which has now grown to 5 million. Total value locked, TVL, is currently at 303 million, according to DeFi app tracker DeFi Llama, just shy of the $326 million all-time high set on Thursday. So we are seeing a lot of growth in Cardano. And of course, Cardano had this big struggle. From its high of about $3, it fell all the way back down, I think, $0.75 cents or so. Still a far cry from uh, the you know, $0.9, $0.10 cents that you could have bought it back uh, a couple of years ago. But it, had, it did have a very deep pullback. Is Cardano now starting to ramp itself to move back into a much higher slot in the top 10? Well, only time will tell. But we shall see. Sorry, we have seen some different, uh, some higher transactional volumes on the higher net worth, uh, higher net worth accounts. So I see that as a positive for ADA. Now, you hear me talk about it all the time in my content. You'll find it at tradercob.com in my courses. You'll find it across many of the things that I do in this industry. Common mistakes that people make. Again, this is brought to you by Cointelegraph. Seven common mistakes crypto investors and traders make. Now, the first one has to be said risk management. Maybe most people don't do it or a lot of people don't. Or they do it poorly. The first on the list here is losing your keys. Keys, sorry, lost keys are among the most common mistakes that crypto investors make. According to a report from China sorry, chain analysis of the 18.5 million Bitcoin mines so far, over 20% has been lost to forgotten or misplaced keys. Moral to the story. If you don't know what your keys are, get them, write them down, don't save them on your computer, keep them safe, keep them secure, and best of all, keep them off your person and keep them off your address. Very important that you keep your keys because they are yours. And if you put your um, crypto and whatnot onto a uh, cold storage wallet, and you lose it, that's the only way you can get back in. Storing coins in online wallets. Yes, many people do still do this, and if this is a place where you can get hacked. It is a place where, once again, you can lose your money. If it's online, if it's not sitting in your wallet, it is not necessarily completely under your custody. Now, this goes out as far as exchanges as well, which, of course, there are many precautions for which you can take with exchanges, such as having 2FA for your account, uh, making sure you have withdrawal addresses with 2FA required, email verification as well, and you can even whitelist certain places where you can send it to only. So there are plenty more security options available on exchanges, but the most secure of all is to have your wealth on your own storage system. So don't have too much online in those wallets. Not keeping a hard copy of your seed phrase. To generate a private key for your wallet, you'll be prompted to write down a seed phrase consisting of up to 24 randomly generated words in a specific order. Write that down. As I said before, keep that elsewhere. Fat finger error. We see this all the time when I do my live trading floor scans and I go through the market. So I will often say fat finger. And it's because somebody has clearly gone into the market and hit buy market for whatever amount they've put up there and it then sends it all the way through the order book because the the um, the market that they're buying into or the crypto they're buying into doesn't have very much volume. There's not a great deal of liquidity. This is an error that I see many, many people make. I don't know who they are that make them. I can just see them when I look at the charts. It's one of those days where you see this huge spike up 40% and right back down. That's a fat finger error. It will cost you money. Do not do it. One instance of this fat finger error was when the De uh, sorry, Diversify platform erroneously paid out a $24 million fee. Another unforgettable tale was when a highly sought after bored ape non-fungible token was accidentally sold for $3,000 instead of $300,000. Double check 
everything. As traders, we do that because we, we write it down on a piece of paper, we go through a checklist, we, we, we double check everything. So you've got to keep sharp in your mind as well, whether you're investing, buying, selling or trading. Be aware, don't trade when you're not in a good mental health space or you're sick or whatever. Sending to the wrong address, this is often done. Again, if you're trying to send USDT, you need to send USDT to a USDT address. If you send your USDT to a USDC address, no good. If you send your USDT to a Bitcoin address, no good. And you will lose that, in many cases, never to see it ever again. So ladies and gentlemen, when sending your, your address, please be careful with that often. And I know it can be frustrating, especially on the Ethereum network at times with high gas fees. It's always wise, if you're not too sure, to send a little bit up front. Better to you know have a $30 gas fee and know it's the right address because it arrives and it all goes through and transact correctly than losing your $10,000 or whatever it may be that you're moving over in a sum. Always be careful. We hear people talk of diversification a lot, whether it be in equities, uh, crypto, whatever it may be. Over diversification is also a thing. Thinking that the more projects that you hold, the better off your portfolio will be, and the thinking that is diversified is actually in fact not true at all. What we wanna be looking to do in any portfolio is really build with blue chips and have a certain percentage of our portfolio aside for lower cap plays that we're making. These carry higher risk. They shouldn't have as much invested in them and they should be there as your harvesting mechanisms for you to build that Ethereum, Bitcoin, DOT, whatever else it is that you think is you know, your blue chip stack. So don't over diversify by throwing lots of money at lots and lots of projects. It's very difficult to manage and do you really have a plan or are you just in the market and buying as much as you can? Be careful with that. Now this one, the last one, when it comes to trading, not setting a stop loss. The thing that I have beef with when it, regard, when it comes to regards to uh, margin is that most people don't understand it. If you have a stop loss, you have somewhat of a barrier to disaster. Okay, that's what they are there for, to stop your losses at a certain point. And whilst they're not always absolutely spot on and you will get slippage from time to time, they're a heck of a lot better than not having a stop loss at all. So what people often do when they talk about margin, like, oh, you're crazy, you're using 100x margin. That just means I need less capital in the account, right? Uh, less crypto in that account to use and you know to take my trade. If I've got two times margin, I'm going to need more in my account to take the same position. If I have 100x or 20x margin available to me, I don't need to have as much in there. I can manage the same size positions, more positions with less in there. Very, very important. But you must always understand how margin works from a risk point of view. If you don't understand the mechanisms of margin, not a big deal. It's not all that bad, you know, whatever. It's not, it's, I mean, it's something that's not very hard to work out or read into. But at the end of the day, it's not understanding the margin that counts, it's understanding how you can get hurt so you can manage your risk and how to have your stop losses and make sure that you're aware of how much you're risking on that given trade. So a great article there really for a bit of a walk through, seven common mistakes crypto investors and traders make. That's on Cointelegraph right now. And finally, we come back across to my shores. Australian celebrities, this is in Forbes, by the way, Australian celebrities say Facebook didn't do enough to stop crypto scans, and the government agrees. So, uh, look, I'll just go through this and I'll, I'll tell you some stories about this stuff in a minute. An Australian government agency and a billionaire is suing Facebook's parent company over claims it hasn't done enough to protect consumers from scams using the names of celebrities on the social media platform. Furthermore, as consumers duped of $1,000 contacted him to complain, this is Andrew Forrest, Australian mining billionaire, Forrest was having no success trying to get Facebook to remove the ads, he says in an open letter, sorry, and an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg went without response. Meanwhile, innocent Australians kept investing under my name, says Forrest, the founder and chairman of Fortescue Metals Group. Now, okay, a little bit of entitlement in there. Let's just roll, ring that little bell. Uh, an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg, which went with that response. How dare someone not respond to you? I know that's not what he means, but I just, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I could not help myself. So that's right. They're using people's pictures, uh, likeliness, uh, whatever, to really dupe people in from trusted names in, you know, celebrity land to take their money. And Facebook, as usual, pretty slow to do anything about it. Now, I have run into problems like this myself. I can remember through 2018, I couldn't do anything on Facebook if I was a crypto company. Very, very difficult in the early days because we were shut out of just about everything. Even our bank, the Commonwealth Bank, withheld for three months a, a, a very large sum of money from us as a startup business. Now they're the champions of crypto, right? I know, I will never forget that. Anyway, one of the things that is really, really important for us to all understand here 
is that Facebook is not going to look after you. You got to look after you. You got to smarten up. You got to think things through. You got to get your education up to date. If you just if you're investing or giving money based off of someone's face on the internet, then it's very very sad indeed. Now, whilst I I, I can sit here on my soapbox and say you should be better informed, you should be better educated. I also do understand that there are elderly people. There are people with that just don't have that same level of being switched on, and there are people that are just simply FOMO. They just follow whatever they see. And all of the, these things are sad when people get taken advantage of. It sucks, and I wish that we could change it, and I wish that there was more effort towards it being changed. But unfortunately, when it comes to Facebook and their parent company, Meta, it seems to be all about money and lies. Uh, unfortunately, that's the case. And you know, maybe my video won't get back put up on Facebook. I don't know. Back to our article, such scams are not unique to Australia. As recently as February, scam ads on Facebook featured bogus cryptocurrency supposedly backed by Amazon and Tesla and individuals including Warren Buffett. In several cases, there were even ads that included an image of Mark Zuckerberg, Meta's CEO, enticing users to invest in a new Meta token. Once again, be aware of scammers. And ladies and gentlemen, that is this week in crypto, an awful lot going on, massive pullback, well not massive, great pullbacks in the markets. Tomorrow morning I will be there with bells on, watching to see if I get a wee little bullish candle. Probably going to be Sunday morning for the daily charts, but I'll keep an eye on the 12s and the 16 hours as well if you are a trader. I will be watching the higher time frames leading into the weekend. Do your scans, manage your risk. And if you want to find out more information or get discounted trading fees, please read the description below and get across to tradercob.com. If you have any questions or any issues, hit the little chat box in the bottom right-hand side of our website. You have yourself a fantastic weekend. I will speak to you. Uh, actually, I won't speak to you next week. I'm actually away next week. I'm going to the Formula One uh, in Melbourne. And I'm very excited about that. So I will not be putting out a This Week in Crypto next Friday. You have yourself a good weekend. And I will speak to you again very, very soon. Bye for now.